Good afternoon and welcome back to the world's worst makeup channel. Um, today I wanted to get a little bit political, you know, a little bit topical, a little bit controversial, you know, just something that I'm not afraid of. Um, so recently I've noticed this trend of white girls seemingly forgetting what race they are and, you know, you've seen it, blackfishing, um, race baiting, just all around dodgy things. And I just wanted to make a tutorial explaining to the girls um, how you as a white girl or white boy or whoever you are um, can do your makeup and not change race. Apparently this is difficult, um, apparently it's something people are struggling with. I don't know if maybe they're just skipping that step in Instagram tutorials, but here is how I, as a very white English girl, do my makeup and do not change race in the process. So if you are interested in finding out how to do that, then stick with me and I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks on how to not change race. So we're going to get our hair pushed back first because you know you don't want to get that gunked up. Um, and I'm going to start with some primer and you're going to notice that my primer um, is just an ordinary primer, nothing magical about it. I'd recommend just getting yourself an ordinary primer. Um, I don't think there are any race changing primers out there, but if there are, then I'd suggest avoiding those. So, we're going to just put this primer in primer spots. I've already washed and moisturised my face, do that as well. Maybe that's what it is, maybe it's like, people aren't like, I don't know how people are doing this, but you know, I'll get the prep down right and then show everything else will fall into place. Also, if anyone mentions my eyebrows, eyebrow slit, I will kill you and your family. Um, <clears throat> So now that that's done, um, we're going to go in with some foundation and I feel like this is going to be a really important step. So, you know, pay close attention. I've wanted to look at me. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't prepare for these things. I just kind of go for it. Hence why I can never find what I need. Here we go. I'm taking my CYO Life Proof foundation this is vi this is vital okay if you're gonna take anything from this video listen to this this is the shade okay well i don't actually don't know what shade this is i didn't say but do you see this this is actually my skin tone now controversial i know controversial to use a foundation that matches your skin tone Listen, I always knew I was different. I was a trendsetter. I was always meant for controversy. And here I am, living that life with my white girl foundation. Now, if you have fake tan and that happens, you can maybe go up a couple of shades. I once accidentally bought Maybelline Fit Me in the shade like 115, which is not actually that dark, but like, have you seen my face? Um, fine, go a little bit bronzy. But keep it in the fair light range, yeah, ladies? Yeah. So um, I'm going to go in with this and you're going to see just what it looks like to not change race. Unless I've been hexed somehow. You never know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I just haven't been saying the magical words. What is it? Abracad blackface? Is that it? I don't know. I've never done it, so couldn't tell you. Um, and you might be wondering, what's wrong with changing race? Weird question to begin with. I'm going to go in my basic brush. Yeah, make sure your brush is like not going to change your race either, just in case it was doing that. Um, well, the problem is, my dears, when you blackfish, when you make yourself look ethnically ambiguous, which is what these people are doing, make no bones about it, that's what they're doing, for clout, because of people like the Kardashians who, when they're all made up, don't really look white, do they? They look ethnically ambiguous. When you do that, you're profiting off of a fetishization or a roticization of a group of people for clout, for gain, for sex appeal, and you're not actually doing that with any of the actual societal consequences that come from being not white. You know, you can wash off that fake tan, that 500 shades too dark foundation, you can take out your stupid dreads and your you weave or whatever and you can be a white person again and you can claim all the benefits that come of that. Actual people of colour can't do that. 
they can't it's just it's who they are so let's not pretend like it's the same as a black girl straightening her hair because it's not and if you need any more information on that then i'm not the person to ask because i can't bother but there's plenty of resources out there so look full face foundation and i'm still white now we're going to move on to the concealer again this is the shade fair this is like the second up from the lightest shade i believe because i am specifically pale not everyone's as pale as me when they're still white that's fine i'm not saying you have to look like this like a ghost that's okay just just saying stick to your shade range and don't don't start looking like you could be from somewhere that isn't you know europe um so this is as you can see also my shade um nothing much magical going on here i'm just applying this as you would any other concealer hopefully i've never understood why people do that right because like surely people in your daily life know that you're faking it like how weird it's just weird it's just so weird like love your skin whatever it is okay i'm not there's nothing wrong with having pale skin and there's nothing wrong with having deep skin all skin is beautiful all skin is lovely and if we lived in a societally free of problems society does that make sense if we if we didn't live in a society then you could look however you want and it wouldn't matter but things have meanings just like words have meanings and we can't pretend like we don't exist in a vacuum of society um it was actually michel foucault who talked about in the death of the author how the author is actually just a vessel in which society is projected so you shouldn't analyze i'm talking nonsense essentially we live in a society and that's why race being is bad okay so i'm still i'm still white madness um i'm gonna move on to powder uh yeah just a little bit this is also in my shade this is 102 ivory make sure again that you are using your shade this is i don't know at what point people start falling down here but like you know here we go i'm just gonna lightly powder because i am gonna wash this all off once i'm done because i'm not going anywhere because it's lockdown baby you know if you are someone who's used to like <laughs> black fishing maybe use lockdown or quarantine as a chance to discover what you look like without all that makeup on and to reflect on your choices just just a thought okay I powdered a little bit so I can do the rest of my makeup. And I'm going to move on to bronzer. Now, I don't know if this is where things go wrong. It's okay to look bronzy. Like, white people can tan. I can't, but I know it's possible. I've seen it with my own eyes. It's just not my life. Because I'm from Scotland originally, many moons ago, and also Ireland. So, skin's not really on good terms with the sun. I'm more of a fact 50 all day, every day kind of girl. Um... But this is the Ultra Sculpt and Contour Kit in the shade Ultra Fair. Again, you might not be Ultra Fair, fine, I'm not telling you you have to be. But you're probably fair, or light, at most medium. But let's be real, if you're starting to reach two, three, four shades too dark, then you need to start thinking quite seriously about what you're doing. So look, I've got some warmth in my face. I've got some, you know, some life going on. But I'm still, definitively, a white girl. There we go. Now, I don't think blush is really a place that people mess up. But just in case, once again, you know, I don't know what people are doing in the privacy of their own homes. All I know is that it's weird. I'm going to take the shade Wild Card from uh, Rimmel. And I say this every time I use it, so I feel like I have to say it. It's because I'm a wild card. I like using quite a lot of blush. I'm really rushing through this because it's more of a, you know, showing you how not to change race than it is about um, actual makeup routine. Like, don't take tips from me in terms of application. Just figure out how to not, you know, blackfish. Okay. Highlight. Once again, we're going to dip into this palette. Once again, we're using the correct shade, ladies and gentlemen. I know, it's insane. Now... Okay, 
you can put gold glitter on your face and it's not that deep so like I'm not too concerned about that it would just look weird but just in case this is again one of those magical places where everyone's messing up and like I know what heavy fake tan looks like I'm English I I went to a, sec a British state comp I've seen it with my own eyeballs and that inherently isn't the problem let's not let's not pretend that is the problem we all know what the problem is eyebrows I, again i don't know how you can get this wrong with eyebrows but once again just in case i'm going to show you how it should be done in case this is somewhere that you are going wrong look still white still a dumb white girl with a slit in her eyebrow because she is an idiot And that is representation, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're nearing the end of this. I'm going to throw on some mascara so that it's like a cohesive look. Or am I? Because I've got to take it off. I'm not going to bother. Mm, no, I am going to bother a little bit. So I'm going to put some mascara on. I don't think eye makeup's anywhere to go near. I think eye makeup is... Unless you're one of those weird weebs who, like, does that eyeliner to make it look like they have monolids and that they're Asian. If you do that, then just don't... Don't be a weirdo. Like, I have very hooded eyes, but I'm not out here trying to be Asian. Like, just just stop it. And if you are someone who feels the need to do that, then I would suggest therapy. Because it's beautiful in Asian people. Like, deep skin is beautiful on black people. But if you're not Asian or black, then why or what? I don't know what's going on. Lips. This is the final place I think people start messing up with makeup, is when they do those dr drastically overlined lips. Now, overlining itself, not a big deal. Um, people have been doing that for yonks, like, it's fine. Um, as a thin lips person, I do sympathise that sometimes you want to just give yourself something that you don't have, and that's okay. I'm going to try and find a shade that I can demonstrate this with properly. I'm currently rummaging through my lipsticks to find a good... Mm, okay. I might just use red to show you. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to go in with a red because it's more obvious. So I'm going to take a lip liner first. I'm going to just line. Now you see how that line is like on my bottom lip. So it's exaggerating it, but it's not making it five sizes bigger. And the same up top. I'm not brilliant at this because I'm in a rush and my hands are shaky and also I'm not brilliant at this. Lipstick. Sorry, up close and personal. Uh, yeah, I'm not very good at this, and my mirror's far away, and I'm hurrying, so. There you go. Do they look fuller than before? Yeah. Do I still look white? Yes. And there we have it. I have done a full face of makeup, and I've not changed race. Now, at this point, you might be wondering how I've achieved such a thing and I've shown you it's through a careful combination of using the correct shade um proper tools and not appropriating people's cultures where I can so I hope this video has been informative and inspirational and revolutionary and changed your life if it hasn't then that's on you and I will see you next time where hopefully I will be less condescending goodbye